Hey there, I'm gonna share a tool with you today from Magic Square AI that I think is one of just their best kept secrets, right? It's a tool that I was a little bit intimidated by at first. I wasn't quite sure how to use it or what to do with it, but I have since just learned all kinds of really cool, unique usage scenarios for this tool that really save time and boost efficiency in education. So it's called Chat with Docs. We're gonna dig into it. And I'll be serving seven unique ways to use this tool. All right, so first things first, where do we find this tool? Where's it at? So you can simply search for it at the top here, chat with docs or search for chat and there it will come up. We'll click to open it up. It'll open up in a new screen that looks like this. And now you have the option to do a couple of things here. You could copy and paste in text such as the constitution, or you can simply add it using the paperclip. You can also use that voice to text. I also want to point out that they give you an option to do a second document as well. If you want to work with two sets of data or two sets of documents at a time. So just notice that that is where they now after you've attached something or added your text you'll click generate and that will move you to the next stage where you can begin to chat with it ask it questions or, or work with that information all right so idea number one is to revamp your old lesson plans so maybe you just want to chat with that lesson plan or you want to find some vocabulary words uh, update it to some new standards add some engaging activities into it so it's as simple as doing this i'm in the chat with docs feature i'm going to come in and click the paper clip i'm going to i'm going to actually upload one from my device but you can do it from multiple places i've got one from 2015 an old school lesson plan i'm going to add that here it'll take just a moment to add it and then i'll click generate so it'll kind of read that analyze it think through it and uh, see some information about there and you can see it's already given me some some practical prompts or questions to ask i'm going to come down here and say can you give me vocabulary words i, I misspelled that but that's okay All right and it will knock that out for me awesome now i had some review built in here too so you can actually see it's pulling in some of my genetics ones i could tell i could let it know that if i wanted to because this was a next Let's say, can you give me some great turn talk questions for this week? Excellent. Here we go. It's going to crank those out for me. Awesome. It's even given them based on the day of the week. So I love that. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to ask one more question. Question. Can you give me a simple experiment or a lab demonstration idea? And, you know, maybe I just want to spice it up, make it a little bit more interactive. So we've got some states of matter observations here, gas production. Here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it gives me some safety notes. So that is idea number one, and that's revamping an old lesson plan. All right, so idea number two is all about instant differentiation. So my suggestion here is to maybe upload a reading passage, assignment, or lesson, and then just work with the Chat with Docs feature to ask for tailored modifications based on the individual needs of your students or their different levels. Now, you may have students that are uh, M uh, ELL or a gifted, talented class, or maybe just a struggling learners, and you're just looking for unique ways to meet their needs. So I think this is a great opportunity for that, maybe to provide hands-on activities, right? So you could use the AI to suggest scaffolding techniques or simplify the vocabulary or come up with some enrichment modifications, extensions for, for kids to do if they finish early. So there are just a couple quick ideas for instant differentiation. All right, so idea number three is data analysis. Some teachers love this, some don't. So this is just a quick way to really amplify your abilities. All right, so I've uploaded some sample data here and I'm gonna to begin to chat with that. Uh, I've got it, it's, it's analyzed it now, it's looked through it. And one thing I do wanna point out is of course, we don't wanna share sensitive student information such as their names or any kind of identifiable number. And I would keep the same for a teacher as well. So in my data set, I just put teacher one, teacher two, teacher three, right? Uh, and I know who those are. So now I could come in and I could ask a few questions. Maybe I want to say, what trends are you seeing with our EOC scores? I'll let it analyze that. Awesome. And I added some, you know, year to year growth here. So it's showing that we have some year to year growth. Um, what another question I might ask would be, uh, where are our strengths? You know, where are some some highlights? Some teachers are really rocking and rolling. So teacher two there, that third period, that third period. Sorry, it, it took it as third period, third grade, actually third period. Uh, overall improvement in the ELC scores, great. There's diverse teacher performance, strong performance for teachers, low failure. Okay, awesome. So it did some quick analysis for me there. Now, one thing I would love to point out to you is if I go back, I can edit this prompt. Now I added it as a, uh, a PDF, but you could upload from your device. Um, I'm sorry, you could you could attach from Google Drive. You could also take a website. So if your state releases some sort of data sets on your school, you could add that link in here and use this and chat with it that way as well. 
All right, so idea number four is all about parent communication. This is absolutely critical in your classroom. So maybe you've got a newsletter that you've used for years, you wanna spice it up. You could upload it in here, chat with the doc, ask for some suggestions, maybe translate it, maybe write it in more parent-friendly language, or you could ask it to generate some follow-up emails that you could send based on the announcements you're sharing. The next powerful and practical way I see using this chat with doc feature is to provide writing feedback with a rubric. So now recall that there are two actually areas where you can upload something. What I would suggest doing is on this first one, we would take all, uh, you know, all 20 essays or all 20 writing assignments that our students have completed. We would add those there with that paper clip. Then on the second, we would add our rubric so that we can give personalized feedback based on what it is that each individual student wrote. Now, a few things to think about as you, you consider doing this, you are still the expert in the room. You are still the, 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 the individual that knows those students better than anyone else. So, right. So we're going to want to read that output. We're going to check it. We're going to personalize it for those kids. But I do think this is a great way to provide generalized feedback, highlight areas of improvement for our students, or just general suggestions, as long as you you do that in a nurturing environment where you also kind of double check it and make sure that you are aware of this student's writing journey and where they've come from and where they're headed. So uh, just be mindful of that as you use it in this manner. All right, so idea number six is to take a deep dive into your standards and curriculum. This may be a bit of a hot take for me because I just think this is critically important and, and almost undervalued sometimes, but I really emphasize this with new teachers. Like really know your content, know it frontwards, backwards, inside, outside, know the ways that what you're teaching now connects to what you're teaching in the future and how that was learned in fourth grade and will be repeated later on. So really just dive in and fall in love with your standards. And so I think using this chat with docs feature is a great way to do that. You can really get in there, ask questions, um, figure out vocabulary, and look for trends and topics that spiral, and uh, just use it creatively this way. All right, so my next idea is for using this to analyze a primary source. Now, I want students digging into those primary sources and reading and struggling with them and trying to understand them. But I then think coming back and layering it with this chat with docs feature, which is available through the, the Magic School student side, is a great way to break down points, help them generate context, help them understand a little bit better. As the teacher, you can also use this to create discussion questions that are just rich um, and that could really engage your students. If we're thinking about history, this would be great for just important historical doc documents like the Constitution, histor uh, Emancipation Proclamation, even just important speeches throughout history, Shakespeare's plays, poetry. If we're thinking about science, this would also be a great way for them to just analyze actual recent peer-reviewed scientific publications. All right, all right. I have shared seven ideas that I hope you find helpful or insightful. Now, I honestly don't need a like or a subscribe, but what I would really like for you to do is take one of the ideas that you've learned today and share it with a teammate down the hall or a colleague across town or wherever. But I think that's where the real magic is going to happen. But, but thanks for checking out and hanging out with me during this uh, quick video today.